Now that we've looked at our standard trigonometric functions, it's a good idea to think about what some of those other trig functions look like. In this video, we are going to consider the graphs of the secant and cosecant and their main characteristics. Let's start with the secant graph. Before we get too far into the discussion, let's take a look at what the calculator graph looks like. When we try to put the function y equals secant x, we find there's no secant button. So instead, we're going to use the relationship definition we learned in the last chapter, that the secant of x is equal to 1 over the cosine of x. What does this graph look like? goes. Interesting. Again, we have some asymptote looking behavior here. This isn't really unexpected. We expect to have some trouble anytime that the denominator is zero. And in this case, that means any time that the cosine is equal to zero, we are going to have an undefined function, which ends up creating an asymptote in the graph. Unlike the tangent function, which had these interesting looking waves, um, the secant graph has these alternative u parabola looking shapes. opening that alternate between a positive opening up and negative values opening down. It seems kind of randomly located, that is, until you also graph it with the cosine graph. Now you can see that indeed those asymptotic Asymptote trouble spots are happening when the x-intercept of the cosine function. x-intercept, asymptote, x-intercept, asymptote. Um, an x-intercept of the cosine function means that the cosine at that x value would be equal to zero, but one over the cosine would put a zero in the denominator and be undefined. As far as those u parabola looking shapes, they essentially bounce off of the maximum and minimum points of that cosine curve. Let us pause for just a moment here while looking at this graph then and identify the key characteristics of a secant graph. The domain is going to be all real numbers except for pi over 2 plus k times pi. Again, we are leaving out those x-intercepts from the cosine graph. The range is interesting. It is all real numbers that are not between negative 1 and 1. Generally, we can write the range in set notation in such a way that we exclude those middle values. Mm. Lastly, the period of the secant is the same as the period of its reciprocal function cosine. The period is equal to 2 pi. All right, so now that we know the base characteristics of the secant graph, let's try to make the graph of the cosecant on our own, and then we'll check it against the calculator when we're done. So we want to graph, slide this up here to give us some room, we want to graph f of x equals cosecant of x. First, recall that the cosecant of x is equal to 1 over the sine of x. 
So I start by actually drawing the sine of x function. Remember that the sine starts at the origin and bounces back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. completing a full period every 2 pi. Once we have the sine x in place as our model, the next thing we want to do is to find the asymptotes of our cosecant function. These trouble spots will happen anywhere that the sine of x equals 0. So I draw dotted lines to represent my vertical asymptotes at every x-intercept of the sine. Then from all the sine's maximum points, I'm going to draw a U-shaped parabola bound by the asymptotes stretching up to infinity at each asymptote. Here's a maximum parabola bound by the asymptotes up to infinity on each side. Here's a maximum parabolas up bound by the asymptotes. Here's a maximum parabolas up bound by the asymptotes. Then, from all the sine's minimum points, I'm going to draw a U-shape or parabola bound by the asymptote stretching down to negative infinity at each asymptote. Minimum down to each asymptote. Minimum down to each asymptote. Now, I can erase the sine x graph, which I was using as a model. Then, my graph of the cosecant x is complete. Let's check how this looks compared to our calculator. There you go. So let's do 1 over sine of x to get our cosecant. Looks great. What are the defining characteristics then of the cosecant function? The domain this time is going to be all real numbers. Except x values equal to zero plus k pi, where k is an integer. These excluded points correlate with where our evaluating function would end up with us dividing by 0. Those x values each reflect a vertical asymptote in our graph. The range of the cosecant of x is the same as the secant of x, all real numbers except for those between negative 1 and 1. We can write the range in set notation like this. Like its reciprocal function sine of x, the period of the cosecant function is 2 pi. In the next video, we'll look at how to graph transformations of the secant and cosecant functions.